of the NAACP. This evening, I will be serving as your narrator. I'd like to thank Reverend Dr. Nathaniel Black for that beautiful rendition of Lift Every Voice and Sing. Coming up, we will hear a welcome from Longmont's Mayor, Ryan Bagley. Following Mayor Bagley's welcome, we will be captivated by an artistic expression of dance. Afterwards, we will attend conversations honoring the greatness of Terry Nelson and Dr. Warren Washington. I welcome you to share this honor and sit at their feet to learn about their contributions to the African American community. Separating the conversations would be another awe-inspiring performance by Reverend Dr. Nathaniel Black. Before we continue, I would like to take a minute to thank our sponsors. This program has been made possible through the support of the City of Longmont, the Longmont Multicultural Action Committee, the City of Boulder, City of Boulder Office of Arts and Culture, City of Boulder Human Resources, the NAACP Boulder County Branch, Lexmark International, the Withers Collection, Modern Icon Media, and our many performers, speakers, and contributors. I'll see you all soon. Enjoy. Hey everybody, my name is Brian Bagley. I am the mayor of Longmont, Colorado. At this time, I would like, I would like to uh, give you all a hearty welcome to our 2021 Black History Month Boulder County celebration. In this unique time, the Executive Committee for African American Cultural Events has shifted from its traditional in-person event to a virtual celebration intended to foster hope in the current climate of the world and of course, to inspire us all to take action. Today, we will highlight and celebrate our black history as a necessary component of our American history. It is important that we focus on creating opportunities and access for our communities to be able to celebrate the rich black history around us. I am elated to see the Executive Committee for African American Cultural Events be formalized in its efforts to produce events that will further be a catalyst towards true social justice and equity. It is important that we allow the space for education surrounding black history and culture because to know is simply to grow. It is necessary that we pay tribute to the countless contributions that have been bestowed upon us by members of the great African-American community. Because again, I repeat, black history is our own American united history. It is important that we hold space for celebration to acknowledge and pay tribute to the various obstacles we have and continue to overcome as a community. Lastly, it is necessary to remember how the giants that came before us paved the way for change so that we may always pay it forward through lifelong service and learning. As Black History Month comes to, a comes to a close, I want us to draw attention to why it began. Let us always remember that it is intended to highlight the substantial achievements and vital offerings of African Americans to the whole of US history. As we enter a space to acknowledge the history of our nation and local community, we do so not to revisit the past, but to remind us of how crucial our forward progress is. Again, happy Black History Month, and we encourage you to deepen your own understanding of the many contributions from members of the African-American community. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Bashir Mohammed. And I'm Christopher Page Sanders. And we are the co-artistic directors of New World Contemporary Dance Theater. We thank you for allowing us to be a part of your Black History celebration through art and dance. What we will share with you this evening is an excerpt from a larger work entitled From Jimmy to America, an Ode to James Baldwin. This work delves into the literary prose and speeches of James Baldwin, bringing his legacy to life through dance within a contemporary context. We state the question, if James Baldwin was alive today, what would his thoughts on the Black experience be? This excerpt that you will see this evening, I Am Somebody, reminds us that we are indeed royalty and that no one can define us but us and that we are indeed somebody. For more information on New World, please visit www.nuworlddanse.org. Thank you.
Hello, hello, hello. I am Madeline Strong Woodley, founder and president of the newly formed Executive Committee for African American Cultural Events, Boulder County, located in Longmont, Colorado. And while the organizational structure today is new, the work certainly is not. We have produced programming dating back to 2005 that has been an annual event that the community has come to expect and love and be encouraged by. We plan to continue that through ongoing initiatives. One of the key initiatives that we've established will be honoring greatness, honoring the great works of the many contributors within our region to show and educate our youth especially on their great works and inspire them in what they can do. Our best practices have been formed and are based on five critical pillars. Those pillars are education, celebration, tribute, solidarity, and of course, service. Today, you will experience two examples of esteemed greatness. Dr. Warren Washington and Charlesine Terry Nelson are our honorees that will be presented by our executive assistant and project manager, Jasmine Cooper Moore. I know you will find it inspiring and enjoyable. Today's presentation serves as part one. Part two of the Honoring Greatness segment will be narrated by our own Dr. Michelle Simpson, Professor C.U. Boulder. She will be presenting both Dr. Washington and Charlesine Terry Nelson with their awards. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for being here. Call a friend, call a neighbor. I'll be looking for you. Have a great day. Thank you. And God bless you. I have a lot of how come and why. And that's the fun of this particular museum and library is the fact that we can say how, why, and here's what the result has been. Is it something that we need to keep working on, which is obviously quite true in this day and age. And has this always been going on? Yes, it has, just in different versions. And who tells the stories and how come we haven't heard these things? when we are in high school and we don't have any history classes anymore. We can't even hardly say the Star Spangled Banner, okay. sing that because we're not taught. So it's a place that needs to be taught and the information is here. And Colorado and the West has a phenomenal history. Dr. Jovi is a dance man that used to work with, he worked a little bit with Cleo, but he did the Fonza in the Black Arts Festival, down here in his Kufi. What got you into wanting to, to be hands-on with history and resources? Oh, I've always had an interest in that. I think probably my dad and mother, coming from different parts of the country, my mom came from a farming, small farming community, but they had 500 acres of uh, 
materials to work with, plus they had, you know, cattle. So she had the farming country part in her, and my dad was a rancher, kind of. And so the two of them always were interested in history. My dad read a paper every day and pulled out parts. And when you come to the dining room table for dinner, you better have a topic to talk about because he didn't like uh, some of the things he saw and he wanted to explain to us as kids what had happened. So my interest has been a lifelong interest. This uh, place is here because Mayor Webb and his wife, this is their legacy. And a little guy came and he had gotten a Martin Luther King scholarship. Mayor Webb asked him, well, who is Martin Luther King? The young man had no idea. And of course, that sparked their thinking about how could someone of that statue, that important to our history, and this young man as a student doesn't even know who he is. So we need to be collecting and keeping African American history in the West. And this library does it from Mexico to Canada, the west of the Mississippi. We are making every effort we can to collect and honor and teach about African Americans who have lived in this part of the country and their contributions, which right. are phenomenal. You've been in this industry for 30 plus years now. Yes. I'm sure that there were some major obstacles that you had to overcome when you first got into this industry. Um, you know, being a resource manager, trying to connect African Americans and other people to the many resources and eclectic history that we do have. Um, and so what might have been some of those obstacles that you had to overcome? Correct some of the wrong information that people had gotten and learned over history about what the African American is as an individual, what they can do and produce as productive citizens, the honor that they have for the American uh, community, and dig up things that were either minimalized, hidden in boxes, on refrigerators, pull out some of that stuff and make our community think about how wonderful we are rather than having somebody interpret to them what they thought we are. We can talk about who we are as individuals and what we have done. Why would you say that it's so important for us to celebrate Black history um, now more than ever? We celebrate our pluses in all of life, your things that you have conquered, the things that you have gotten beyond, things that people have told you you can't do, here is the time to talk about, yes, we can. And here are examples of what we have done and contributed not just to the African-American community, but to all of American history. When you hear about the many inventors, you don't hear about them very much, in, and certainly not in history, at school and that kind of thing. And you find out some of these people have saved our lives. Charles Drew and the transfusion. That's just a small example. I could go on forever with people who have contributed and it wasn't just saving the African-American lives, it was saving American lives. And like since that. we helped to build this, this country, it wouldn't be here without us. Yeah. Our that. contributions are significant and that is why we need to celebrate the past, the present, and celebrate what's coming for the future. African American history is not just African American history, but American history. Yes. Um, would you leave us with any last words, any final thoughts? I think everyone should understand and honor and praise history overall because history tells us where we were and what can be done in the future, where we are presently, and what can be done and to look forward to in the future. We should celebrate those things that are positive accomplishments. We see a plenty of the negative, but the positive accomplishments should be highlighted because it gives our children a look at a positive future and things that they can research 
and do and improve on and even change to the point we won't even know what they were <laughs> when they started out. And that's what keeps the community and the society going, is what the youngsters can bring forward. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, I think the, the, the history of me in terms of atmospheric science is that I started with, as a small child, being interested in reading about scientists like Albert Einstein and, and many others. I knew that when I graduated from high school, that I was pretty good in math and, and physics and, and chemistry. I had excellent teachers uh, at, in Portland, Oregon, where I grew up. I then uh, I went to um, Oregon State and I had worked as, as a, a dishwasher at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Portland, Oregon. And I asked the on dietitian if she had any ideas of where I could go to school. And she says, well, we have a smaller hospital in Corvallis, Oregon. And she, met, she, 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 she went and called the dietitian there and came back to me and says, I got you a job. Wow. So that largely de 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 determined where I went to college uh, in uh, Corvallis, Oregon. I, I took sort of standard physics courses and mathematics courses and so forth. And then I had a, 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 a winter job at the top of a mountain near Cor Corvallis. It, it, it was Mary's Peak. And it was working on, on taking radar pictures of the weather from the top of the mountain. So I would have to, in the wintertime, I would have to hike up there. It was about, I think, 9,000 feet. You could drive in the summertime, but in the wintertime, there would be too much snow. I started taking some courses in meteorology. Uh, on the, it was actually part of the physics program. It was an interesting experience for me because there are only roughly 10 or so African-American students going to that school. And at that time, they had 4,000 students. I uh, started uh, shifting in my last year to, to a meteorology emphasis I liked. Uh, trying to understand how the weather works and how the climate works and so forth and so on. I think what determined uh, my long-term path was to learn as much as I could about computers, making computer models work on the early generation of computers. It turned out I got a PhD there, of course, and then uh, I found out that there were job opportunities at NCAR, mm -hmm. National Center for Atmospheric Research, in, in, in Boulder, Colorado. And there were some other places that offered me a, a little bit more money, because mm -hmm. my starting salary was $9,000 a year. But NCAR seemed to be the place where I could do research of the, of the type that I, I felt very comfortable with. A colleague of mine, and his Japanese scientist named Akura Kasahara, he and I had, had lunch with the director of research. And we, and we told them that we wanted to build a computer model of the atmosphere, which would eventually be coupled to ocean models and sea ice models and other types of models, so that we would be able to simulate how the climate is changing. And, and that's how, how we got started. We had a group of roughly five or six people, uh, most of them programmers. And we, we came up with a, a, a plan that we pretty much followed. Although, uh, you know, if you do research, you have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. 
and not everything is going to be right, and you have to experiment with different techniques and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that, that explains how I got into the field. Well, let me talk about discrimination. <clears throat> Even in high school, I was active in something called NAACP. And we had a problem in Portland, Oregon, where you could be turned down at restaurants and so forth and so on. So the NACP was in an active mode, even as, as far outside of the South. Anyway, uh, I was the, the vice president of the, of, the, the, of the youth council. I was still in high school. Mm -hmm. and, and we were just supposed, so, supposed to be supportive of the, of the parent organization of the NACPB. <clears throat> and it turned out in, in, in 1952 they were successful in getting a, a, a public accommodations law passed in Oregon. Well, I carried that spirit when I got to Oregon State <clears throat> and I asked for, for, this was probably in my sophomore or my junior year, I forgot when, is that they discriminated in their fraternities and sororities. So I arranged a meeting with some of the black students and the president of the college. And he was pretty indifferent about doing anything about it. He, he admitted that discrimination is not right, but he didn't feel he, he could sort of deal, uh, deal with off-campus things like fraternities. So, <clears throat> over the years uh, you know, that I was at NCAR, I would spend some of my time visiting black colleges, trying to rec recruit them to come to NCAR. I have to admit that I was very unsuccessful because when I said NCAR is in Boulder, they say, how many black people in Boulder? <laughs> I, I don't know what the actual number is, but it wasn't very many. Oregon State, where I, where I went, had only one black family, and he lived outside of town. Over the years, I, uh, I was able to recruit some students. And uh, one student I like to mention is Marshall and Shepard. Who's the president? Who's a, a past president? As I was, I was the first African American president of the American Meteorological Society, which is the meteorological people, their primary association. And um, I, and then uh, Marshall Shepard became the, the second president uh, to I get that honor. That is awesome. So, uh, I've had an interesting life. Thank you for watching so far and joining us to celebrate Black history and culture. Next up, we have a special presentation 
from the Withers Collection. Come into Boulder's Dairy Art Center in January 2022. Afterwards, we will hear drumming from local percussionist instructor and small business owner, Ms. Nasha. Rounding this portion, we will hear from Boulder City Councilwoman, Junie Joseph. Pictures tell the story. A comprehensive look at history through the lens of photojournalist and historian, Dr. Ernest C. Withers, Sr. Dr. Withers' largest collection is exhibited at the Withers Collection Museum and Gallery on world-famous Beale Street in Memphis, Tennessee. Pictures Tell the Story is a virtual tour of the images displayed in the museum and presents a series of photographs taken by Dr. Withers covering the civil rights movement, including the Montgomery bus boycott, the March Against Fear, the Little Rock Nine, and the trial of Emmett Till. The trial of uh, Emmett Till's murderers was basically already decided before the trial occurred. The charges that were brought against those men, the jurors, the whole system um, at that time was already against justice for Emmett Till. From the Memphis Sanitation Workers' Strike through the last days of Dr. Martin Luther King, each segment of Pictures Tell the Story offers historical facts and commentary about the events he documented and how he saw these life-changing times. Knowing that this history is not only African-American history, but it's American history. And to see what a race of people went through and struggled and to be captured through the lens of Dr. Ernest E. Withers, that hit home to me. Pictures Tell the Story takes an iconic look at Negro League Baseball and the people who made it legendary. The history of the blues, rhythm and blues, and the musicians that captured a generation. My favorite song by my grandfather actually is I Like to Live the Life That I Sing About, but my favorite blues song of all time is Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City. <laughs> And as you all know, that's a Bobby Blue Bland song. So, um, and I call him Uncle B. A unique teaching and enlightenment tool, Pictures Tell the Story is more than a chronicle of African American history. It is a moving look at the hidden side of American history, the side you really need to know. Withers took a lot of really intimate photos of famous figures like Dr. King, or Aretha Franklin, Sam Cooke, you know, Jackie Robinson photos that you really don't get from other archives because Withers knew them on a personal level and they were allowed, you know, into spaces that other photographers weren't. Dr. Withers' photographic works are being exhibited throughout the U.S. and Europe and in museums across America, including the Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. His history is our legacy. Pictures Tell the Story will be released in January of 2021. Greetings, this is Mother Nature and we are celebrating our culture. Yes, I, Black History Month, you know, we represent and we you know, bringing a little bit of Caribbean, you know, drum beats, a little bit of vibe to keep you jazzy. You know what I mean? Unity, strength, and power. That's all it's about. That's all we about. That's all we want to push. All right? Bless up. Y'all ready? Yep. Yep. All right.
Hi, my name is Junie Joseph. I'm a Boulder City Council member. I am so delighted to be participating in this event. So let's have a chat about Black History Month. Black history is American history. The Black experience cannot be separated from the American origin story. In 1926, Carter G. Woodson and the Association for the Study of African American Life and History launched a Negro History Week to bring attention to the Black experience and make Black history accessible to a wider audience. He felt it was too important not to celebrate and believed that his role was to use Black history and culture as a catalyst in the fight for racial and social justice. By celebrating heroic Black figures and the countless contributions they made to American history, Woodson's goal was to use history to prove that Black people played an important role in the creation of America and thereby deserve to be treated equally. Ultimately, Woodson believed Negro History Week, which became Black History Month in 1976, would be a vehicle for racial transformation forever. It is important to celebrate Black history now more than ever, because the great diversity within our communities need the glue of our African-American past to remind us of not just how far we've come, but how far we still have to go. Dr. King once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Again, Dr. King once reminded us that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So in order to make changes in your community or even in your own life, start, start small and commit yourself to doing something versus doing nothing at all. When you're doing the work around racial equity and justice, it is okay not to always be perfect or right. What matters is that you're doing the work to be 1% better each and every day. Do the work to address the various biases that you may have and stereotypes. By reading a book, by having a conversation with friends, and also seek educational resources, whether it's at edu's or .orgs organizations or universities. Also, you can look to the NAACP and the United Negroes College Fund or the National Urban League. There are so many resources out there and I hope you all take this opportunity and be inspired this month to make a difference, whether it's in your own personal life or in the life of others. Happy Black History Month. Thank you for watching our presentation today. Do not let this engagement become an exercise in futility, but rather let this be a charge, a call to action. 2020 was a pivotal year that continues to bring new expectations and ingenious creativity. Don't be left behind in 2020. There is much work to be done. So what's your challenge? What's your call to action? Consider how you can partner with your community to increase equality and equitability for all. Perhaps you'll partner with UNICEF or your local NAACP branch or even your area's chamber of commerce. You may decide mental health partners is more your style while your neighbor may choose to make meaningful contributions to education or homelessness, or even addiction and recovery. I challenge you to consider the marginalized, but make it meaningful. 
Again, thank you for your participation. I hope the rest of your day is as beautiful as you are. Have a wonderful evening.
through these difficult times, we have to hold on to God's promise, knowing that he's been faithful and that he's kept us this far. He's not going to leave us. So we wanted to just stop and encourage somebody today to let you know that the Bible says the race isn't given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one that can endure. You got to persevere, but you're going to make it. And we got to see what the end is going to be. Bless you. Yes, yes.